Preston Physics, Grade 11, Electricity and Magnetism, Note 9. Fields around conductors. When we look at fields around conductors, we have to start by looking at what was the experiment that actually we noticed a difference here, or we noticed something that was peculiar. Well, Hans Ornsted noticed that there was a strange effect on a magnet compass when a current was placed through a wire that was near that compass. So what he did was place kind of like a bunch of compasses, which all had their arrows pointing north, on some sort of piece of paper, and then put a wire through that paper. At first, there was no current going through that wire. So all of the compasses pointed north like a normal compass would. He then flowed some current through the wire. And what he noticed is going to look something like the diagram below. So at first we have no current. We have our piece of paper, we'll put four compasses on it, we'll put a piece of wire through that paper that's got some sort of current that can be put into it. So at first all of the compasses point to the north. He then put a current through the wire. Let's say the current was going down. So the exact same diagram, but you're going to notice the compasses look a little bit different. When we make our wire and we have our compasses and we point the current down now going through the wire, all the arrows in the compasses actually align themselves into a circle. Now this is the principle of electromagnetism. When an electric current flows through a conductor, a magnetic field is created in circles around it. Now this is kind of easy to say, but a little bit more difficult to draw. So I'm going to show you with a diagram how you actually draw the current or which direction the current's going and how we signify those electric fields. First, when we're drawing our wire, we always draw it looking like a cylinder. Now, if you put a dot on the end, that signifies the current's coming out that end, and the current's going to go in a counterclockwise motion around that dot. If you put an X on the end of that wire, however, that means the current's going into the wire from that direction, and that's going to make a clockwise direction for the electric field. To make it easier to remember, there was a rule developed to figure out which way the field goes around the conductor. So it's either going to be clockwise or counterclockwise, and we just need to know that we're pointing our thumb in the direction of the dot that's in that wire. So this is actually known as the right hand rule for conductors, or in our case, right hand rule number one. What you're going to do for right hand rule number one? You're going to pretend to grab the wire that we're looking at. So you're grabbing that wire with your fingers. You're going to point your thumb in the direction of the current, whether it's into the page, right, left, down, up, or coming out of the page. Your fingers are then going to roll in the direction of the magnetic field. So whatever way your fingers grab, that's which way the magnetic field is going. Kind of like the diagram I'm about to show you. So if you look here, we're drawing a hand. Now what we've drawn is a hand that's grabbing a wire with the current going to the right. The current's going to the right, that's where our thumb points, and that indicates that the fields are kind of flowing around in the direction of our fingers. Now with the first example here, we've got a current wire and we've got an X on the end, so we know our current's going to the right, and we need to know which way these field lines are going. If we put our thumb to the right, we know the field lines are going down. Try to figure out which way the arrows are going in this first direction, knowing the current's going up, and try to figure out in this next diagram, knowing the direction of the field lines, whether it's going to be a dot or a cross on the top of this wire. The 
questions associated with this note are 17 and 18 in your yellow duotangs.